Hello again, everyone. I'm Steve Kime with the City of Enid. Thank you for joining us today here on the Enid Television Network. And we're at the round table once again. A very special guest, all too familiar individual, I'm quite sure, Trisha Mitchell. <laughs> She's the executive director of For Our Kids. <clears throat> Trisha, welcome to At the Round Table. Thank you. Nice little round yeah, table. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Yeah. Well, right off the bat, uh, there may be some viewers that maybe have just moved to the Enid community or they've heard of For Our Kids, but they just really don't know what it does what's it all about oh, we get so, that all the time <laughs> so how, how would you how would you share that answer well the the simplest answer is that for our kids um, our mission is to support children and adults with disabilities and we do that through a variety of programs we do um, the miniature golf course which we'll talk about in a little bit we also have a store the second story employment center um, we have an employment center that employs 56 individuals with disabilities and they make dog biscuits, they make greeting cards, we do bath products, we do shredding and cardboard recycling. Um, all of those uh, enterprises provide jobs for individuals with disabilities. <clears throat> we also do a lot in the community. We do Miracle League, which is a baseball league for children and adults with disabilities. We have a bowling league. We do summer autism camps for children with autism and sensory needs. And we also do special events just throughout the whole month, uh, throughout the whole year, once a month for individuals with sensory needs. Just gives them something to do. We partner with Leonardo's to do a sensory night. We partner with Spirit Express. Um, and we just try to find programs that fit the needs of the community. Sure. Well, I lost track after you mentioned the miniature golf. <laughs> and, then, and then you just kept going on and on and on. There's a lot. On the impact that you're doing. <laughs> Uh, tell us the website, Tricia, that you can go to to find information about, uh, or at the Facebook account, where can they find out information on For Our Kids? Okay. Because you mentioned so many things. There are so many and programs. <laughs> and we don't want to gloss over all of that. Right. Well, it's ForOurKids.com. Okay. And you can look at all the different pages, and it talks about all our different enterprises and all the activities that we do. And also, Facebook uh, is For Our Kids. Okay. And so it's pretty easy to find, and we keep that updated every day. And the miniature golf, how's that going? It's going wonderful, absolutely amazing. We did more the first day we were open than we did the entire month last year. Uh, so so we're, we're liking it. And not only does it provide a lot of different jobs for our individuals, but it also provides revenue to keep us going. And sure. so we're really, really happy with the progress and, and we're proud of it. We're, I think it's a very nice facility for people to um, you know, spend some quality family time. Through the years, I'm quite confident that you've seen Trisha Mitchell with For Our Kids on Community Talk, another program that airs on the Enid Television Network. But there was a special reason that we invited Trisha over to at the roundtable today because November is a big month and uh, it all has to do about resources and finances, things of this nature. So what is going on in the month of November at For Our Kids? Well, we are doing a huge push this month. It's called We Are For Our Kids, and there's even a hashtag, We Are For Our Kids. Okay. We are trying to raise the remaining $1.9 million that we need for our capital campaign. We are 53% of the way there. Part of the first phase was the miniature golf course, which was a huge success, but now we need a new building. We need more room. We don't have enough room to serve all the people that we currently serve. We fight to be out in the community. We fight to do things to find opportunities for people um, when we don't have the actual physical room. And so we are very creative in that. Uh, but now we're looking to expand. And uh, our dog treat production is over at Autry in the incubator. And the new building would allow us to move that back uh, okay. so that we would have that. And so this push is just really just to remind people that, you know, hey, we're almost there. I mean, we've raised $2.3 million so far, and that's amazing. Uh, but we need to close the gap and finish raising the rest of the money. Uh, we've been challenged by the Maybe Foundation in Tulsa and with a $250,000 grant if we can raise the rest so we're really pushing and you know that's due in January but we thought November is you know giving Tuesday and, and all the fun stuff that goes on in November we can we can get this done and that answers my question because I was <laughs> going to say well why November why November? Uh, November November should be probably 40 days long and the month of December <laughs> should be at least 45 50 days long because there's just so much that goes there's on so in November and December so you have 1.9 million to go mm -hmm. you have the matching grant with the maybe folks that are very generous in the Tulsa area and across the state. Um, so you've already told us why November is important. Um, let's talk about some ways to give. I know you, you would prefer I write a big check right here on the <laughs> set today, but Tricia, tell us what are some ways to give? Well, you can bring us a check, write okay. us a check. You can visit Mini Golf and uh, the second story because those 
support our programs. Um, you can make payments over time. So if you wanted to make a larger donation, you could spread that out over three years. We have uh, direct debit where we can take it right out of your account. So let's say you can only do $25 a month. We can do that until you fulfill a pledge. Um, you don't have to pay us right now, but we have to have a pledge in writing. So even if you know you want to give, but you're not quite ready, sure. if you made that pledge, it would still count. Um, you can also donate online at our website. You can donate on Facebook. And we have some little fundraisers coming up that, that would be opportunities to donate as well. We'll get back to the fundraising topic uh, here in November in just a moment. But tell us about, uh, I noticed on your website, there was a little caption that said, visit Hannah's Lemonade Stand. And I think yes. that was like on each Tuesday or something like that, or well, I, I may have the wrong um, It's going to be on there. Giving Tuesday, which is Giving November Tuesday. 27th, and that's okay. just kind of a nationwide day of giving that is promoted on the Internet, and it's promoted on Amazon and PayPal and all those things, and so we encourage people to give on that day. But Hannah is an employee, and she told her mom, she's like, Mom, we need more room. I want, I want to have a lemonade stand and I want to give all of my money to That's for great. our kids. And she's using all of her own money that she earns working to purchase everything for the lemonade stand. And she's just adorable and just wants to help. And we're just blessed to have people like that. And what's the date once again? That November 27th. We, November 27th. That's yeah. the day we need to be thirsty for lemonade. <laughs> right. so. Well, we're also going to have hot cocoa because it might be chilly that day. But we'll hook you up. <laughs> well, it's November, so it could be 70 it to, could be. to it 20 could be. degrees. Yes. Well, let's go back again to the November November event because this is very uh, critical for you. With $1.9 million remaining in your capital campaign goal, again, it's to allow you for a new, newer building, yes. larger building, yes. bring some of the resources that are out and about, bring them to under one roof, if you will. Yes. And what else with the, the, the new building? provide for you? Well, the new building is going to have um, a community resource room that uh, if families that need information can come. They can use the internet on a computer. Okay. They can uh, look at all the resources that we have available um, and meet with people. Um, there's going to be a sensory room, which is going to be a model um, room that has a lot of different sensory products in it. So if you have a child with autism, they can come and test out some things. Okay. Some of that stuff's really expensive. So this way they could see if it'll work for them. Um, it's also going to have the kitchen back in there and a workroom to do more because we have not been able to expand the jobs that we have because we don't have enough room. We, sure. we barely have enough room to do. So we hope to expand and, and do some other things that will bring revenue and bring jobs. Um, the new building will also have a nine hole indoor golf course. And that is something that we're hoping will bring year-round revenue. Right. Miniature golf okay. course, yes. <laughs> I, I was envisioning this huge, long, green no, fairway. No, no, many, many, it? many. Uh, but it's going to be a way to have year-round birthday parties sure. and, and things like that. And so um, that'll that'll provide lots of jobs, uh, consistent sure. for our individuals. Well, one of our roles at the Ena Television Network is really to highlight uh, the different nonprofits in the Ena community and the, the work that they do. But we specifically wanted to invite uh, Tricia here today at the roundtable to talk about November and the fundraising event. Yes. Tell us once again, you said there you can give over time yes. if you need. You can give online, but somebody can just walk to your office. And where's your office located? Oh. <laughs> so where they know to, to write that big check. Uh, we're at 710 Overland Trail. We're just south of Garriott, uh, right across from Chili's over by Northcutts. Okay. <laughs> we're real easy to find. Okay. Um, you'll see the big, beautiful golf course, and our office is just right there. Um, yeah, cash, checks. We can even take credit card donations. We can take them over the phone, however you want to give. Numerous ways to give Numerous and to make ways. a difference. There's a Facebook account. There's the website. Uh, is there a phone number that someone could call and say, you know, I'm not much on the technical side of things. I, I'm old school. I'll just pick up a phone and talk to you. Absolutely. How, how, would, how would they reach you by phone? It's 237-5890, and that's okay. a local number. Okay, we'll have that 237-7890. I said that wrong. Okay. 237-7890, yeah. We'll put a number on the screen. <laughs> that would be good because I said it wrong. hopefully it is right. <laughs> well, Tricia, uh, we uh, wish you well on your fundraising endeavor. We know that Enid is a, very much a giving community. Very But much. there's a lot of needs in our community, and uh, this is very important. $1.9 to go, and it sounds like you've got some... Uh, grants out there that uh, matching grants which is pretty exciting so
keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining me at thank the round table me. today. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and thank you for joining us at the round table. Our very special guest, the executive director for 4 Our Kids, Trisha Mitchell. Thank you again for watching and look forward to seeing you next time at the round table.